If you don't know what each of these components does, that's all right. We'll go over each component's function as we put the drone together. To start off, we'll go over all of the components that are used to put together the drone. Each one of these components has a job to perform. We'll go over these separate subcomponents when we start to build. To start off, here we have our LiPo battery. Also, you've got the drone carbon fiber arms as well as the frame. Here's your electronic speed controller which is used to control the motor. Here's the motor itself, including the prop adapter and all of the bolts. Here's your flight controller. We've got the Nase 32 flight controller, including the standoffs. As you can see here, this one's pre-soldered. Depending on not you have to solder the pins in yourself. This is your transmitter and your receiver. Your FPV video camera. All the nuts and bolts to put the frame together. The FPV video cover as well as any wire to connect all the electronics together. You also need some solder, some double-sided Velcro, and some heat shrink. The other two tools that are handy to have are the battery alarm and servo tester. These two devices make some of the steps easier to perform and we'll go over each of these when they come up. When building a drone, it's important to have a nice, clean and safe workplace. We're gonna be using solder and a hot soldering iron um, shouldn't have to worry about it if anything gets burnt or you drop solder onto it if you are building for anyone under the ages of 14 you should probably be guiding them along there are not too many things that can go wrong but it's always better to be on the safe side. Also, we're going to be using LiPo batteries. There is some risk involved with using LiPos. They can puff up and burst into flames if they're not used correctly. You always want to be mindful of them if you've got a, a safe place like some kind of lockbox that's flame proof or you've got a, a flame resistant bag that's always good also you want to keep lipos within certain voltage ranges you don't want to overcharge or undercharge them both of those things can cause them to fail. All the other components are fairly safe. I must say that the only other risk related with putting together a racing quadcopter is the propellers. You obviously never want to put the 
propellers on inside you should always test your quadcopter without the propellers on only put the propellers on once you're out and you're safe and clear from any other hazards these things they don't weigh much but when they're flying around at 40 or 50 kilometers an hour you really get a feel for how dangerous they could be if an accident were to occur but you know if you follow along and use your common sense then you should be fine as we're only dealing with 12 to 14 volts of electricity there's no real risk but having said that you want to make sure that there's no exposed wires also make sure you've got a nice clean battery connection the first step to putting the motor on the arm is to screw it down using the bolt you can use either set of bolts to put the motor on the arm but make sure that you have enough short bolts to put the prop adapter on depending on how many bolts you get in the pack will determine whether or not you need to use the longer bolts on the bottom this can take a little bit to get right but essentially they all should line up through the back here you can see we're using the longer bolt try and make sure that the wires run straight down along the frame so the next step is to prep the wires for the motor which includes cutting and also tinning for soldering in order to cut and tin the wires all you got to do is snip them about one centimeter along or even a bit less then stripping the wire all you want to do is move a couple mil in from the end apply light pressure on the outside cut in a little bit and try and pull the end of the wire cover off without snipping all the way through also we want to put on the prop adapter using the short bolts we're going to need some thread lock you can put thread lock on everything if you want to it's used to hold bolts in place under vibration which you'll get a lot in the drone this is the main point that you should be using the thread lock now we're gonna start doing some soldering the first step is to tin the wires which means that we're gonna put a bit of solder on the ends of the wires so they can join together when soldering you have to keep in mind heat and temperature you want to have your soldering iron at the correct temperature in order to heat up the wire and your solder so they melt together nicely you don't want to have it too high otherwise the solder will start smoking and you'll get bits that will fly off 
usually you can tell quite easily when you have it too high if you have it too low of course you won't get the required conduction of heat here we go what you want to do is you want to bring your soldering iron under the wire and press the solder onto the top of the wire and slowly move the solder back and forth between the soldering iron and the wire if you keep in consideration these three points and keep them as close as together as you can then you'll be able to get some good connections another thing you should make sure is that when you tin the wires that there's plenty of solder on the end make sure that it's completely wet you can tell usually that the wire is nice and shiny and that there are no parts of the wire showing because they've all been taken up by the solder so the next step is to put some heat shrink onto the wire you want to do this before you make the connection with the ESC otherwise you won't be able to get it on simply cut some short small lengths of heat shrink and then put them on the wire So now we're going to get the ESC all ready and connected to the motor. What you want to do is you want to cut the wires and then strip them the same as the motor wires and then we want to join them together. On the other end of the ESC, you also want to cut the wires. Don't make these too short. You want to keep as much length as you can. Hopefully you haven't forgotten the process of tinning the wires, because here we're going to have to do that again. It's the same process with the other end of the ESC. We have four arms in total, so we'll have two arms spinning clockwise and two arms spinning anti-clockwise. So this will dictate that we have two arms with all of the wires joining up in line and then we have two arms with the wires the red and the yellow wire will be crossed this is so they spin the opposite way to the other arms So here we are joining the motor to the ESC. We've got our heat shrink on and all wires have been tinned. Now we simply hold both ends of each wire next to each other and apply heat to join. This can be a little bit tricky. If you've got helping hands, they always can make things easier but otherwise you just have to persevere <music> 
once all wires have been connected simply pull down the heat shrink and then apply a little bit of heat Here you can see that the red and yellow wire are crossed. Make sure when you're putting the wires together that on two of the arms you have the yellow wire and the red wire crossed. It's always a good idea when you can to use some heat shrink to hold the ESCs in place you're going to have to move the ESC down as far as you can so you've got plenty of room on the other end of the arm to attach to the frame what I do is I push the ESC down as far as I can until it's nice and square on the frame and then heat the heat shrink to keep it in place remember if you don't have a heat gun a much more simpler but cruder way is to use a soldering iron If you don't have any heat shrink, you can always use cable ties. They work just as well. joining the wires together as what was described before we want to keep two arms with the wires straight and two arms with the wires crossed you need to cross any two of the wires it doesn't matter which kind but just make sure that the wires are crossed on two of the arms so they spin in the opposite direction <laughs> 